and we have our Mardi Gras event in just two and a half weeks. So if you want to register, you need to register now since you'll have to book your hotel room soon. We're not doing any more sales for our Mardi Gras event, but we do have a few really awesome announcements to make about it. The Hines County Economic Development Authority in Mississippi is looking for an executive director. And to start us off, uh, this is the biggest announcement I think we've had on this segment so far. On today's Learning Lab, we're going to talk about something that, uh, of course, has been around since COVID, and that's the expanded incentives that are supporting the growth in remote work. Next Move Group, the voice of economic development. Here's your host, Gabby Mulis. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Economic Development Newscast, the voice of economic development. My name is Gabby Molly, CEO of Next to Move Group, and we have our Mardi Gras event in just two and a half weeks. So if you want to register, you need to register now since you'll have to book your hotel room soon. We're not doing any more sales for our Mardi Gras event, but we do have a few really awesome announcements to make about it. We're going to be celebrating Bruce Tackerman's birthday at our kickoff event at the Drinker Young Bourbon at 5.30 p.m. So come to that. We're going to have birthday cake. We're going to have a band. It's going to be awesome. Bruce hasn't celebrated his birthday in, in a big way since uh, COVID started. Since he's been in Canada. So we're going to celebrate him big at that, uh, that kickoff event. And then our other sponsor, Insightful, will be giving away a smoked old-fashioned cocktail set at our conference, valued at about $200, so you could get a chance to win that. And we're going to have book signings from our site selection panelist, Mark Williams. He is the founder of Strategic Development Group, and he'll be doing a book signing of his book, Corporate Site Selection and Economic Development, A 30-Year Perspective. So those are just a few announcements about our Mardi Gras event. It's about two and a half weeks away. So you're going to want to book now if you're going to come because you want to get that hotel reservation. So come have a good time with us and learn something while you're at it. And that brings me to my next topic for our movement members. Uh, Chat Chancellor will be doing a video, which is going to be an in-depth look at our Mardi Gras event on Tuesday. So we'll be on the lookout for that. And we have a couple of executive searches that are still open. We have one that closes this Friday. That's for the Springfield Area Missouri Chamber of Commerce. They're looking for a new vice president of economic development. So that closes um, Friday, February 11th at noon central time. And then we also have another search going on right now for Hines County, Mississippi. They're searching for a new executive director that is located in Jackson, Mississippi, which is the capital of Mississippi and is a really great area with lots of food, culture, blues music. So if you're interested in either of those jobs, you should reach out to Brittany McCoy on our team. And my tip of the day, if you're coming down for our Mardi Gras event, you want to go check out the parades, you should bring some kind of backpack or something where you don't have to hold a bag in your hands because you're going to be waving your hands around, you're going to be holding stuff in your hands, and you're not going to want to have to be holding a bag or anything like that. So a light backpack where you can carry just a few essential things things that you're going to need. And that's it. All right. Well, that's it for this week. And until next time. Due to various demands on time and resources, economic development and trade and export agencies often struggle to complete effective market research and business outreach campaigns. For the past 10 plus years, Research FDI, along with our affiliated consulting groups at Research B2B and FDI 365, have leveraged our in-house knowledge, resources, and expertise in market research and consulting to help over 250 organizations directly facilitate inward investment attraction and new trade and export opportunities for their regions across a wide variety of industry sectors. Our highly personalized services and best cost to quality ratio in the industry ensures our client satisfaction, leading to repeat customers year after year. What are you waiting for? Leave the market research and business outreach to the expert team at Research FDI. To learn more about our services, contact us today. Welcome back to another week of jobs with the Next Move Group. We have two searches available on our end, and we have another one that we should be able to announce soon. So without further ado, first up in Next Move Group searches, the Hines County Economic Development Authority in Mississippi is looking for an executive director. Hines County is located in the heart of Mississippi and is home to the state capital of Jackson. The county consists of eight communities and is approximately and has an approximate population of 232,000. It's roughly six hours from Atlanta, Dallas, and Nashville, and about three hours from Memphis, Mobile, and New Orleans. The right fit will be able to form partnerships with local, regional, and state economic development organizations and work towards housing development and successfully market all that Hines County has to offer. 
You can view the full job profile on our website at www.thenextmovegroup.com backslash Heinz. And you can also apply by submitting your cover letter, resume, and references to Heinz at thenextmovegroup.com. Any questions can be directed to me at Brittany at the next move group.com, or you can call me at 504 615 7174. The salary range for this position is 110,000 to 200,000. And the last, two, last day to apply is March 4th by noon. Next up, the Springfield Area Chamber of Commerce in Missouri is looking for a vice president of economic development. Springfield has the culture, healthcare, and entertainment of a big city without the traffic. It also has a metro population of over 450,000. The Chamber's mission is to serve as the principal advocate for business in partnership with the community. It supports and assists existing businesses and acts as the primary catalyst in promoting the economic health of the Springfield area, stimulating jobs and improving the quality of life. In this position, they would really like someone who can focus on the creation of shovel-ready sites and in rebuilding their BRA program. You can view the full job profile on our website at www.thenextmovegroup.com backslash Springfield. To apply, you'll submit your cover letter, resume, and references to Springfield at thenextmovegroup.com. You can send questions to me again at Brittany at thenextmovegroup.com or give me a call at 504-615-7174. The salary range for this one is $120,000 to $130,000, and the last day to apply is February 11th by noon. All right, and other searches available across the U.S., the Jamestown Stutzman Development Corporation in North Dakota is looking for a CEO. The CEO will act as a liaison in maintaining and building key relationships in support of community projects. He or she will also manage the activities, programs, and operations of the organization. Some of the key areas of responsibility include business development, relationship development, community and statewide engagement, public relations, operations management, and community development. A CECD certification is preferred, as well as a minimum of five years of experience. You can apply by submitting your cover letter, resume, and references to info at growingjamestown.com. The salary range is $100,000 to $120,000. Next up, the Giddings Economic Development Corporation in Texas is looking for a president. The primary goal of this position is to provide leadership to the corporation and its constituent organizations and the achievement of community and economic development goals that result in employment and per capita income greater than that of the national average. Some of the president's responsibilities include planning and supervising of all corporation activities, pursuing grant funding opportunities, BRE, and startup and entrepreneurial guidance. A bachelor's degree is required five years of experience in economic development, investment attraction, or substantial experience, with experience within business and industry is preferred. Lastly, a CECD certification is preferred in this position as well. You can view the full job, job description at jatoday.com. To apply, submit a cover letter, resume, and at least five work-related references to Suzy at jatoday.com. The salary range is 90,000 to 100,000. Last but not least, Show Me Christian County in Missouri is looking for a president and CEO. So SMCC or Show Me Christian County is looking for a president who can lead the regional economic development strategies and initiatives across all municipalities within a county. The mission of SMCC as the collaborative partnership serving as a business concierge is to advance economic health through an intentional and balanced approach to growth. This position will require some travel, both local and out of state. To apply for this one, you'll follow the link provided. Last but not least, the salary range is $70,000 to $80,000. That's going to be it for jobs available across the U.S. And as always, good luck in the job search. Hello, this is Brandon Nettles. In this week's Brandon the Basis segment, I'll be detailing new industrial announcements from across America. We have a bunch of big announcements this week, and to start us off, uh, this is the biggest announcement I think we've had on this segment so far. Intel will invest $20 billion in two new computer chip factories on a 1,000-acre site in Licking County, Ohio. The initial phase of the project is expected to create 3,000 jobs and 7,000 construction jobs over the course of the build. Monogram Assembled Foods will invest $53.5 billion to establish new operations in Dixon, Tennessee. The project is expected to create nearly 400 new jobs. West Pharmaceutical Services will invest more than $70 million to expand its manufacturing operation in Kinston, North Carolina. The project is expected to create approximately seven jobs over the coming years. Hyperion Companies will invest more than $297 million to relocate its HQ from 
Southern California to Columbus, Ohio. The project is expected to create 680 new jobs over the next six years. Eli Lilly and Company plans to invest $1 billion to build a new pharmaceutical manufacturing facility in Concord, North Carolina. The project is expected to create 600 new jobs in Cabarrus County. Quadrant will invest $95 million and build its first U.S. mass production facility in Louisville, Kentucky. The project is expected to create 200 new jobs. Tractor Supply Company plans to, invest a, a, plans to build a new distribution center in Maumelle, Arkansas. The $100 million project is expected to create 450 new jobs by the end of 2023. Piston Automotive will further expand its operations in Jefferson County, Kentucky. The, the $26.3 million project is expected to create 117 new jobs. 80 Acres Farms plans to locate a new vertical farming facility in Boone County, Kentucky. The $74 million project is expected to create 125 new jobs. Boom Supersonic will build its manufacturing facility in Greensboro, North Carolina. That's a $500 million project, and it's expected to create more than 17, uh, 1,700 jobs by 2030 in Guilford County. Green Motors will invest $4 billion to convert its Orion Township assembly plant for the production of fuel size EV pickups and up to $2.5 billion to build Ultium's third U.S. battery cell plant in Lansing, Michigan. The projects combined are expected to create approximately 4,000 new jobs. Uh, Expansion Ammunition will invest $100 million to locate at Tex America Center in Texarkana, Texas. The project is expected to create 400 new jobs. Greenage Generation Holdings will invest $264 million to develop a new cryptocurrency data center in Spartanburg, South Carolina. X Energy will construct a new manufacturing facility in Metro Phoenix, Arizona. The $300 million project is expected to create more than 900 jobs over the coming years. General Motors plans to invest nearly $154 million at its components plant in Lockport, New York. The project is expected to create 230 jobs by 2026. Finally, 3M is going to expand uh, their manufacturing operations in Clinton, Tennessee. That's a $470 million project, and expe it's expected to create 600 new jobs by 2025. That's going to round us out for this week. Uh, let us know if you have any announcements you'd like me to feature, and I'll see you next time. On today's Learning Lab, we're going to talk about something that, uh, of course, has been around since COVID, and that's the expanded incentives that are supporting the growth and remote work. You know, local economies are benefiting from adding new jobs, and whether those jobs are performed on-site or remotely, they are, they are attracting quite a few incentives. Uh, so much about life has changed dramatically since March 2020, and for millions of Americans, we've had a crash course in remote work. Uh, as of an October 2020 Gallup survey, fully a third of American workforce was always working remotely, and another quarter said they were working remotely sometimes. Uh, for instance, tel telework positions have been taken into account as far as incentives. It's a remarkable shift in work practices and attitudes, but it's now clearer than ever that the local economy benefits from adding new jobs on-site or remote. Uh, there are incentives that are attracting new residents. Some communities are using the benefit of remote work to attract gainfully employed taxpayer residents. What about workspaces? The layouts of workspaces have even changed. Remote work is not just a necessary response to COVID, but potentially a new way of doing business that can be beneficial to some jurisdictions that could really stand to attract high paying remote jobs and the well-paid people who, who fill them. You know, before COVID, surveys repeatedly showed that around 80% of, of employees want to work from home at least some of the time. And the October Gallup survey confirms that a lot of people are liking what they've been experiencing. That's today's Learning Lab.